Can I sit next to you? You can. You are. Nice. I think we'll just wait a couple minutes for uh, some people, people to, to sign on. Why not? Episode two. Episode two. It's gonna be better than episode one. Episode three is gonna be better. You than know, while two. we're waiting, let's talk about Star Wars because I feel like everyone can either hate on that or love on in the conversation. Yeah. What was your feeling on uh, Rogue One? <sighs> I loved it. Yeah. The Darth Vader scene at the end. I could have yeah. watched. 45 minutes of that. Oh, we have our first viewer. Who is it? David Henry, David how are you? What's up, David? You want to keep waiting for people? Or you yeah, go? probably. Okay. You know, while we're waiting, we might as well mention um, if at any point, and we're going to say this three times yes. probably, if at any point uh, people at home have any questions as far as their Vanguard gear or about Rogue One, uh, whatever, let us know. I'm we'll not sure we're all day. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably be more equipped to be able to answer those questions than I will, so... I, got uh, I should, you know, while we're thinking of it. I don't know if you were thinking of this. Thank Spoon for uh, supplying the, the the soundtrack this week. This is my album of the week. Spoon, check out on iTunes, Spotify. That's right. We're not paying for this, so uh, download their music. Nathaniel Melton, how you doing? How are you? Good. Just waiting for people to tune in here. Got 11. What do you want to wait till? Uh, like 20 more minutes. All right. Yeah. 20 more minutes before we get started. <laughs> We're just gonna hang out and talk about our favorite things. My favorite color, <laughs> black. Oh. Okay. That's so morbid. I know. <laughs> I'm not a morbid person. But. Do you want to lay down and we can actually psychoanalyze this for a second? <laughs> I think we should get started. Here. All right. Uh, everyone's working, right? Yep. Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome to On Your Guard episode 2. Mm -hmm. I'm Brian, your host. Today with me is Jared, usually our producer behind the scenes. He's joining us. Yeah, um, hopefully, hopefully not going to be super awkward. In yeah, front of the camera. it's going to be fun. Um, since more people are joining in now, hit the comments with your questions, anything along the way while we're talking. Um, and obviously we're going to be giving away a tripod at the end of this episode, so uh, stick around for that. We have a spe well, yeah, we do have a a special gift, gift for those people who do not win the tripod as well. So stick around. Uh, episode two, we're going to be talking about gearing up for travel photography, uh, talk about the challenges of travel photography, the necessary gear, what to bring, what not to bring kind of thing, and then just the importance of traveling light depending on what you're shooting. So. Yeah, and I think this week was sort of special because uh, we're going to flip the script a little bit. Uh, normally, Brian, of course, is your, your friendly host, but uh, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about this because mm -hmm. you're not in the traditional sense necessarily a travel photographer, but um, you do work it into what you do, yep. and I was going to ask you a few questions on that. So first being, how do you work that into, into what you do? Yeah, so I mean, I'm not a travel photographer, meaning like I don't have a travel vlog. There are a lot of photographers that I follow that do, that are amazing, um, but I just, I love to travel. I love new experiences, I love seeing new places, and I try to do that as often as possible. So whether that means working brands into a trip. Me and my friends will usually kind of brainstorm a trip and where we want to go, and then we'll decide, okay, how much of it do we want to focus on shooting for us, and how much of it can we help subsidize the trip by bringing brands on to shoot products or, or you know, content for other brands. You know, one thing, I'm just going to stop right now because I guess we're having some audio issues. So uh, why don't we, while we're waiting on that, uh, and Jacob, give me the, the thumbs up when you think you got that solved. Uh, we can just kind of mention again, we will be answering your FAQs. If mm -hmm. you have any questions for us, we're giving away a, a VO 235AB um, at, at, towards the end here. And if you don't win or if you're not even able to catch the live feed, uh, we'll also uh, have something special for people who are, are catching the replay. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, Let's see what we got going on. What do you recommend? for tripods that fit into a carry-on. We're going to get to that, so stick around. That's one of our topics of discussion. We just want to make sure our audio issues are solved here first. Can you show, what did it say, can you show can support larger lenses? As far as a tripod, I would probably say, I, I usually might go to for, for bigger equipment is probably the Alpha Pro yeah. tripod. Um, that's sort of a flagship. I, I think um, it's what made, you know, put Vanguard on the map originally. So uh, we've made a big, you know, splash with the VO travel tripod for sure. But if you're getting into
so even the long big lenses for me would work on a VO tripod. But if I want to Really You're good. Kick right now for yep, carb, no carb, well, low carbs, but yeah, my wife found the recipe and I made it was to awesome. I, w I had my first Red Robin experience <laughs> thanks to you the other day. And what, what was it? Chicken slider. So it's basically chicken and waffles, yes. uh, but in slider form, which I it was, thoroughly it's amazing. enjoyed. I've had it probably seven times, and it's awesome. Yeah. Um, How are we doing on audio now? Do we want to just set up a Zoom mic, maybe? Um, got to set up so his only his mic on, and then we can still hear you. Very That's fine. Just speak up. I'll just. Are we good now? <laughs> lean in. Okay. Can everybody hear us now? You it's guys better. are talking. Okay. So Nathaniel says it's better. We're awesome. gonna go with that for this week. Okay. Um, All right, let's get back to it. So we had a lot of questions coming in about like small, um, non kind of, I know somebody asked about being in the wilderness and not wanting to spook animals and stuff. So we're, we're going to talk a lot about that stuff. Um, kind of in the interview portion that we were getting to when our audio dropped out. Portion. Yeah, we were just talking about um, how you work travel. Yes. And how you're into what yep. you do. Yep. I don't know if there was anything else. I'm sure people couldn't hear your answers. So uh -huh. uh -huh. Verbatim what you said before. Right. Yeah. So... Gosh, I've got to try to remember what I said. No. Um, so usually when I plan a trip, uh, it's it depends on whether I want it to be personal or whether I want it to be for brands and stuff or whether I kind of want to do a little bit of both and subsidize, help subsidize the trip. So my friends and I will usually uh, kind of plan where we want to go and then we decide, okay, how much of the time do we want to, how much time do we want to spend shooting for us and then how much time can we also work other brands in, whether it's shooting a truck whether it's shooting products or clothing or something like that. And that, that all kind of helps build our portfolios, but uh, it also just helps subsidize the trip because obviously we have those brands pitching in some money. And what would you say are some of the challenges that kind of creep in when it comes to travel photography? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, I mean, you have to think about the necessities of what you want to bring. You have to, you have to think about, I mean, for me, I'm al I always have a tripod with me. So I want a small tripod with a very small footprint because y you just don't want to be lugging around a ton of stuff. I'm lucky to shoot Fujifilm mirrorless and everything, all my camera gear is relatively small. It's not relatively, it's really small. So I can bring like all of my camera gear that I need usually and a VO tripod um, and it's it's perfect. So what pl uh, plays into the planning then? Because one thing I kind of wanted to get into with you uh, and we discussed this before was the notion of um, sort of rolling with it versus, mm -hmm. you know, pre-planning. Yes. And uh, you mentioned something about, you know, the art itself, mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to comment. Yeah, on. absolutely. Spontaneity is a big thing for me. Um, I love, I, I remember something that I said the first time that you guys probably didn't hear. Um, <laughs> I love just going out and experiencing new things in new places. So a lot of the time I don't like to plan every little detail, but there are situations where, if you're shooting for brands or if you're shooting for someone other than yourself, you are going to need to plan out what yeah. you need to do. You need to plan out locations and times and figure out even where the – I mean, I've gone as far as figuring out where the sun's going to be for any given shoot. Yeah. Um, but, but I don't know, something to me, there's nothing like just showing up in a new place and just seeing what you can find. Right, right. And um, just – on the flip side of that, obviously, we have some pros out there. Josh Bender, shout out to Josh Bender. Uh, Finding the Universe, uh, uh, Lawrence North, guys like that who, that's what they do, travel blogging. Yep. They may be a little bit more prone to, you know, know that their audience is interested. And if, if you're visiting a certain mm -hmm. country, you're going to want to, you know, know the, the things to do. And so maybe their concentration is a little bit more focused yep. um, in terms of that. Jerry, uh, you asked, isn't someone watching the comment section? Yes, we are. We what are. would you like to know? 
<laughs> Bri uh, looks like Brian asked, what, do you rec what tripod do you recommend for easy carry and mountain hiking? I actually have a friend from Kentucky, shout out to Anthony, I don't know if he's on here or not, but uh, I recommended him the, all, or the VO 235AB, and he's an avid hiker, and he loves it. He was going to go with something a little smaller, but I talked him into going with the 235, 235 because of its stability and still ultra portability, so I think that one's perfect if you're you know, carrying in a mountain setting. And it just so happens that's the one we're... Like, we're giving away today, so hang around uh, to the end. You yeah. could win one. Um, let's, while we're on the subject of tripods and, you know, climbing in the mountains, whatever, uh, top five things you would look for in a travel tripod. Yeah, so, I mean, this could cover a ton of things. I'm going to go with, for me, the most important, or the most important things are size. I'm talking size opened up, you want something big enough that's going to be able to work, but then also something that's small enough to, that you can throw in a carry-on or something like that. Mm -hmm. So size is huge for me. Uh, stability, like I just talked about. Stability is big because you don't want, I mean, I shoot a lot of long exposure stuff, so I want something that's going to be rock solid, and so sometimes you can't have everything, right. but those are the big things. Um, features, whether you're going to go with carbon fiber or aluminum, uh, heads are huge. Or aluminium. Aluminium if for our UK friends. Um, feet, I really like the feet on the VO because they screw to reveal spikes and I'm all the time in just muddy terrain or, or sandy terrain or whatever and I, I use the spikes like crazy. Um, and then just, yeah, like I said before, compactability and just the ease of traveling with. And mm -hmm. yeah, those are some of the, my... Okay. Um, yeah, and we should mention all... Oh, warranty. Yeah. Warranty. You don't want a tripod that breaks and then you can't do anything about it. Just to speak to that then, I know that when you purchase a VO or any other tripod for that matter, you're going to be, be covered with a, a two-year warranty. And then you have a chance on our website to register your product for, uh, to extend that warranty to five years. So um, any recent trips worth uh, mentioning? Oh, gosh, yeah, so many. So I'll work my way back. I was in Virginia with a bunch of my friends. We did a road trip around the entire state that was pretty fun. Uh, before that, I had a little bit of a break. I was in San Diego in just the SoCal area. Um, a couple weeks before that, I was in Yosemite, which was unbelievably amazing. Was that your first time? First time in Yosemite, and Ansel Adams is what inspired me to be a landscape photographer. Right. So it was like nothing I can ever even explain in words. I could fumble around like a schoolgirl talking about Yosemite. Well, it's almost like... I equated it to when I went to Washington, D.C., and you see these monuments. Yeah. The, the mountains are the, 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 yeah, basically the natural mm -hmm. wonders look like monuments. All yeah, all they, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you think about El Capitan and, and Half Dome, just, uh, it's, yeah, right. they're just natural. They're there, and but they are monuments. They're so monumental. I want to hear about uh, uh, any funny stories on the road. Yeah, so this one's a good one. I'm going to try to keep it short, but... Uh, <laughs> Going back to the road trip and going back to spontaneity, like we talked about before, um, my friends and I, we kind of decided a, an overall route going counterclockwise around the state of Virginia. We flew into D.C. and then worked our way through Shenandoah and down and then around to the eastern coast and then back up to fly out of D.C. again. One of the big portions of our trip was going from the mountains on like the western side of the state to the east coast. Well, there's this island called Assateague on the east coast of Virginia that is supposed to, at the end of the, 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 the story is we should have done more research. We did a little <laughs> bit of research and just scratched the surface, saw that there are these wild horses that came over from the shipwreck in like the nice. 17 or 1800s, and yeah. they've just been roaming this island for however many years. So we're like... I just have to say, we have somebody from Singapore. That's pretty awesome. Oh, sweet. Yeah, awesome. Hello, <laughs> Singapore. Um, yeah, so we were like, yeah, we got us, you know, go see this island. And I love shooting horses anyway. Yeah. So it was like, a, I'm like, this is too good to be true. Like, there can't be wild horses. So we made this six, was it six, four or six hour drive across the state one night uh, to be, to make it to Assateague so we could shoot uh, sunrise there. And then come to find out the horses are fenced in and it's like all wetland areas. So they have a lot of room to roam, but there are only like two public access viewing points. Uh -huh. So we wasted like two days of our trip for specifically for this, and it was a total fail. So like you can't plan for everything when you when you go on a trip. Sometimes you just have to right. grab life by the horns and and you know just take what what it gives you. But we ended up fine. We ended up going a little further north and shooting some beach stuff in Maryland actually. But uh, yeah. 
Well, uh, I see a lot of questions actually coming in about awesome. the tripods themselves, and uh, we were holding off a little bit in terms of answering some of those because we we're going to do a, a really brief overview of the VO line of mm -hmm. travel tripods. Yep. Yep. Um, so just kind of starting in order because we'll we'll talk about weight and height, and I can we can get even more specific if you, if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, uh, maybe I should talk about functionality first. Yeah, um, sure. So this is a VO tripod. What really distinguishes uh, Vanguard's travel line is the ability to, you press a button here and be able to collapse this column, which you can see that's exactly what's going to give you the, uh, the compact ability to be able to tuck this away into a suitcase. I mean, this thing, you know it's light. Yeah, it's super light. So, it's okay. aluminum and it's still super light. Right, right. Um, but super compact, uh, and that's really the difference, I think, in terms of how we're able to pull off what we do. Um, the one I'm holding here is the 204AB. Uh, know that all of our uh, VO come as kits. So basically that's going to come with a head. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them we have the 235AP, which comes with a pan head if you yep. prefer to. Um, but you, out of the box you're able to just start using the yeah, tripod. which is awesome. Yeah. Um, this 204 AB, uh, the, we should kind of talk about the, the numbers. Maybe. Yeah, the numbers were even confusing for me until we started talking about it. It makes total sense now, but mm -hmm. it's all it's good to know. Basically, the 204 AB, the 204 20 represents the diameter in, in the leg diameter. Yeah. Uh, so bigger, bigger leg diameter, more solid tripod. It's able to hold more weight. Right. Exactly. Uh, and then the the four in the 204 actually represents the number of leg sections. So you'll see that I have three leg locks, therefore four leg sections. Um, yep. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on from the 204, I don't know if I have these in order or not. Yeah, I do. Uh, this is the 235. This one happens to be the AP, so this comes with that pan head, mm -hmm. uh, pan head instead. Right. Um, but you can also do uh, 235 AB, which this, we're giving away. Which is this, which is the same, it just has a ball head, which is what I use. Right. This is the tripod that I bought before I ever even knew Vanguard was where it is, right. like in my backyard, basically. So, yeah, I bought this tripod and have used it for about two and a half years now, and I've had zero issues with it. It's a really solid tripod, and it's the one we're giving away, so <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah, right. Uh, and, again, just to cover it, four leg, se uh, four leg locks, meaning 235, five leg sections. So, um, and, you know, we did have a question in terms of, I think, weight capacity, so I might as well get into that really quick. Um, I don't know where it is now. Well, there's one, there's actually two more to mention, though, the 265 AB and 265 CB. AB being aluminum ball head, aluminum tripod with the ball head. Uh, 265 CB being carbon. Yeah, uh, this is the, C, the CB, so this is the carbon fiber tripod. You probably can't see, but it's, uh, yeah, just the, the legs are different. Right. Another common question, um, if you wanted to get super low to the ground, you can actually replace the center column with this little piece here, uh, which will allow, yeah, you would be extending your legs as far as possible, and then using this column here so that you can get super, super low to the ground. As you see, you can't do it right now without putting yeah. that column up. So that's where you would replace this piece here. Yep. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as weight capacity, um, really it's not so much the legs uh, to consider as much as the head itself. You can replace the heads on these if you want. All of the VO come with the, uh, with the um, an Arca Swiss compatible plate. Which, which is cool. awesome. Um, but also, I mean, in terms of weight capacity, uh, you have anywhere from the 204 uh, weight capacity, I think is about, uh, what I'm, I'm forgetting here, I think about 8 pounds actually. And then up until the 265 AB and CB can both uh, carry about 18 pounds. And that's really more so about the head. The legs will give you more stability the thicker the legs. I would say if you're getting into um, some heavy, heavy duty gear, like we mentioned earlier, probably consider the Alta Pro instead. Yeah. Um, but if you're traveling and you don't want to feel it, you know, really, really consider one of these travel tripods. Dave's asking how big of a weight difference. I feel like you answered that between the aluminum and carbon. And it really comes down to the head more so than the legs, well, right? He might be referring to how much weight does the actual tripod Way, oh, I think. Gotcha. Uh, which I think it's 3.7 pounds for the aluminum. The carbon I think is 3.3. So it's it's there's you're shedding you're shedding some pounds. So yeah. it's worth the extra right. money you spend on it if you want to if you're hiking and you want all you know all the right. extra weight reduction you can. For all the people asking and saying that they want it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> first of all you have a chance to win one by the end of this broadcast. 
Second of all, I should mention right now actually, VO is on promo. So if you go to our website, vanguardworld.us, uh, you'll be able to pick up a VO for probably the best price you'll be able to find it. Yeah. Until you know the end of this broadcast, we may have a, a, another... It's up to, up to $30 off, right? $30 yeah. off, yeah, I, I believe on the 265s and possibly 235s as well. So, yep. Yeah, um, awesome. yeah. but uh, moving on, um, we showcased the, the tripods. We can kind of talk about the bags really quickly. The, VO is a whole line, a whole travel line. Uh, we actually have this messenger bag, the 37, where you can actually tuck your tripod in here, in the bottom, and carry it around as a messenger bag. So that's super cool. Uh, we also have a backpack option where the tripod will be able to sit in the side of the backpack. So, yeah. so just something else to consider. All about the portability. Yeah. Oh, Richard says that he likes how the legs extend and lock. And yes, another thing we could have talked about for features is the clamp locks versus twist locks. It's Clamp locks are great too. Usually a preference thing, I think. Yeah, um, it is. We've had really, really, like a lot of compliments, I should say, in terms of uh, these legs and these leg locks in particular. Um, easy to clean, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. that's, that's another common question we get. Yeah. Any other questions right now? Let's see. Finger on the gimbal head. Uh, no. We don't. Not, not right now. Um, oh, Mark. My Alta Pro broke yesterday after two years. Could really use some new legs. Warranty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, assuming you have your, your receipt, uh, your warranty should cover you. Uh, but having said that, reach out to repair at vanguardworld.us. We are super, super approachable about those things. Um, we really take pride in our customer service. So uh, take us up on that and, and, and email mm -hmm. Michelle. You'll even know who you're talking to. We're, we're you know, yeah. we're real people here. So. Real people. <laughs> David asked a good question, what's the advantage of a, a pan head versus a ball head? I, oh, I was going to say, I prefer a ball head. I've actually only used a pan head when I'm shooting video, just for smoother pan. Or, or if you're shooting a panorama, it's mm -hmm. easier to you know, lock and be able to twist and stay at the same. A ball head, you're going to have, you still have that ability here, but yeah. I feel like it just makes it easier when you do have a pan head, if you want to speak more. No, I, I, I've heard that landscape photographers, and you being one of them, maybe this, this doesn't prove right, but I've heard a lot of landscape photographers prefer pan heads. Yeah. Um, but I think you, have more, you have more control with a pan head, yeah. I think. You have more control over everything, whereas I just like, I think for me it's portability and yeah. ease, and I feel like, you know, it's this is much smaller. Well, that one's still pretty small, I it's guess. Small, you I have notice. no reason to not like a pan head, apparently. <laughs> no, you will notice, and this tucks away, too. So, it, you know, it, it does sort of still keep a low profile, a, a smaller silhouette, uh, being able to collapse that. But, um, and, but you definitely mentioned the video thing, and that is a big, big point. Mm -hmm. In terms of being able to do video, the pan head's going to help you out there for, yep. for pans, obviously. Yeah. So, any other questions right now? A lot of people like the bags. Cool. Yeah, and I'm sure we can answer questions after we're, we're done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, in, otherwise uh, maybe we should talk specifically about the 235AB. Let's do it. Away. I just put it away. While we're getting that out, uh, I'm thinking how this is going to work in terms of the giveaway. You've been to a lot of places. I have. Uh, how about your dream country location? And in the comments... If you can guess where Brian wants to go next, there you go. That's how we'll do it. And the first person to guess the correct country will win the 235A. Somebody should get it, but if you don't, we'll start throwing you hints. Right, right. So yeah, let's talk about the 235. This is a tripod that I use on a pretty much daily basis. Right. So. Yeah. No, I mean, basically, I think this is. I would say this is our most popular, probably because of versatility. Um, we got a Switzerland up there, not Switzerland. Not Switzerland. I. Um, that is cool, but not my. I've actually number been, one. What, that's the best trip I've ever been on. Well, there you go. Maybe so, Switzerland should be up there for me. Okay. South, South America. No, it's so, not South no. America. We'll let you know if we get, the, we'll get a yeah. winner here. Um, the 235 in particular I like a lot because, strangely enough, it's a larger leg. But because of the leg sections, mm -hmm. this actually folds down into our, our smallest profile, our smallest mm -hmm. silhouette. Um, so it's super, super compact. Um, and yet you have the strength of the leg, so it's super, uh, you know, stable as well. Mm -hmm. So, you got a Mexico? Nope. Europe, you should probably be more specific. We're talking, <laughs> talking countries, that's a lot. So let's get a little more specific. <laughs> Not South America? Not South America, nope. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, countries, uh, we're, again, if you're just joining us, guess which country Brian wants to visit next to 
photograph, essentially, and mm -hmm. let me give away this 235AB. Yep. Um, so back to the chicken and waffles. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Red Robin. That place is awesome. Do you know the origin of, I have to explain every time I talk about chicken and waffles, the origin <laughs> of chicken and waffles. Most people think it's a southern dish. It yeah, is not. I would think that, yeah. It comes from New York, or, you know, basically the, the, the jazz scene when people were, like, performing and they'd get off the stage in the middle of the night and they were, the kitchen would be switching over oh. from nighttime food to, to morning food. That is the origin of chicken and waffles. It makes so much sense now. Iceland. United Kingdom? Not no. Not, no, but uh, I feel like they're getting close. Getting close. close um, yeah. Is this a country everyone's heard of before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Sure. You guys can guess multiple uh, times. Yeah. I think some people are doing that. <laughs> so, all right. Last week we, or two weeks ago, I should say, and by the way, we're doing this every two weeks, um, and we're doing a giveaway every two weeks for, on our Facebook Live. Uh, mm -hmm. Two weeks ago we just threw out what was it, like my favorite number yeah, or something? Yeah, like a number, <laughs> and so people were just guessing numbers. Dubai, not Dubai, but that's actually... That would be fun, yeah. for sure, but it's definitely not there. Antarctica would be awesome, too, but no. Not for me. I've been to France, <laughs> uh, been to Italy. It's awesome, but I don't need... I mean, I would go back, but it's definitely... What else? I, I want to keep, yeah. keep this food related. Also up there. We yeah. talked about pizza and what else this, this week about not being actually Italian. Oh, pizza we well, pizza Italian. is Italian, yes. We had somebody in the office that was telling us that pizza wasn't Italian. I was like, you're he crazy. Fired yeah, no works yeah he's, a, he's out. Yeah. You don't know that much about pizza, you're gone. <laughs> That's your favorite food. It's my favorite food beyond food. Oh, it's amazing. Saudi Arabia for all the horses. Yeah, you're yeah. still trying to shoot those horses. So. Yep, <laughs> I am. Still looking for horses. No, nope. I think what we should do is give a clue. Okay. So we said you're getting close with the... Evening. Um, Let's see, what would a good clue be? <sighs> we were talking about... Shrek this week. Yep. And I like to, I mean, I'm a big, big Shrek fan. Yeah, Shrek's awesome. So, I pretty much... Should, can we talk as far as who almost was the voice of Shrek? Yes, we should. Chris Farley. Yeah. How awesome would that be? Isn't there something where you could hear him oh, auditioning absolutely. for it? Oh, absolutely. That's crazy. So yeah, Shrek is your clue. Any other, by the way, while people are guessing <laughs> countries, if you want to guess a country and ask a question at the same time, that's fine. Yeah. We'll still answer your, your question. Well, I can go through some of our questions that have come in online, too, while well, we don't have. Um, so we already talked about our warranty. One of the questions was, what kind of warranty could I get with my tripod? Just to reiterate, uh, tripods, all tripods come with a two-year warranty, and then you can extend it to five by registering online. Um, any other questions? No. So uh, Shopper asked, is the head detachable? Yes. Yeah. Your tripod's it's going to come with Allen wrenches, so you're able to, you know, lay, loosen and tighten and take your, your head on and off. So, let's see. Does the TBH50 ball head use a D-ring to attach the camera, or do you need a coin or screwdriver? Uh, no, it does not, but the Alta Pro does. Mm -hmm. So. You, hey, shout out to Remy Musser. Musser, uh, one of our pros from uh, Greece. He said it should be Greece. I would, <laughs> I would come there. Yeah. Yes, I would, indeed. Um, Canada for the Rockies. Dave, up, that's Dave? close. No, it's not close to me, but I want to go there. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> You're really confusing people. We've said Shrek, uh, Chris Farley, and now... Kilts. Oh, boy, that's going to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> it, you're kilting me. You're kilting me. No, no, no. Nope. Not United Kingdom. Nope. But close. Yep. Very close. More Come specific on. than that. Very, very. <laughs> you need to be more specific. Let's see. What else do we have here? Malaysia, nope. All right. How tall? Oh, we got one. Yep, Mark. Mark, you win. Scotland is where I want to go. Everybody is going to Iceland right now because it's crazy awesome landscapes, and I don't doubt that at all, but everybody's going to Iceland. I want to go to somewhere where, you know, I mean, sure, people are going to Scotland, but, like, Scotland has such a crazy topographic landscape. And it's, you know... I think my next clue is also... I was going to say Haggis, which probably would have given it away. Haggis would have given it away, so, too, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, so we did mention that if you did not win... And by the way, um, our winner, Mark, uh, private message us your address, and we'll, we'll arrange everything to send that out. Um, we want everyone to feel like winners. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we mentioned that video is already on promo. So if you go to vanguardworld.us, um, you can pick it up for an amazing price. On top of that, we're going to throw out a Facebook Live promo code for just you guys, and that is on top of the already reduced price. So now, right now, you're already able to save 30 bucks on VO. Uh, 
Type in uh, promo code FB Live. That's F is in Facebook. Yep. B is in Facebook. Um, <laughs> live. All caps. It's cap sensitive, and you will get twenty percent on top of the already discounted, uh, discounted rate. rate. Yep. So. Yep. So you're already saving up to thirty dollars, but you're going to take another twenty percent off of that. So right, right. everybody who wasn't Mark that won, go get a tripod. Everyone who's not Mark, which that's a lot of people. Yeah, aren't, aren't Mark. So. Yep. I think that's it for this week. Yeah, we're going to do it. this again in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have a special guest in two weeks. Uh, if we don't, fire the producer. <laughs> so that guy's going to be gone too. Pizza guy and producer guy. Uh, and that's it. Thanks everybody. Thanks again. We'll Thanks see you in two weeks. Join in. Yeah. High five. Hold it there.